the honor of uh, moderating the um, the ICANN Open Forum, which is a, which is a tradition at uh, every IGF meeting. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Bertrand de la Chapelle. I'm the director of the Internet and Jurisdiction Project, and I'm also a member of the ICANN board. And I used to be the uh, French representative uh, for the French government in the Governmental Advisory Committee. The exercise of doing an ICANN, an ICANN forum at the IGF is always a delicate um, exercise because we are outside of the space of ICANN, but a lot of people who are participating or coming to the ICANN forum at the IGF are actually, for a significant number of them, and I see that in the room, people who participate in the ICANN process. And so there is always one danger, which is that if we begin to address basically the issues that we are addressing at ICANN and re doing a, an insider discussion, the whole meeting is lost for a lot of people who are actually not part of the ICANN space. And to be frank, it is a little bit demobilizing those who are coming here to see what is ICANN, what is ICANN doing, just to get an update and maybe to be enticed to come participate or follow uh, the activities of ICANN. So I will try to, with the help of the different people who will uh, come and speak, to use this meeting at the IGF, not to create an ICANN meeting within the IGF, and I know it's always difficult, but to take the opportunity of the IGF to allow ICANN and the ICANN community to report, to explain to people who are coming to the IGF and maybe not following the ICANN activity on what ICANN does, what are the achievements, and what are the next steps. So fundamentally, this is what we'd like, we'd like to do. Um, along basically two tracks, there are a certain number of things that have happened in the past uh, few months that ICANN has progressed in or has undertaken. And there are a certain number of things that will happen in the months to come that you might be interested in participating in if you're not following ICANN in general or if you're already part of the ICANN community. In addition, beyond those elements that are very factual, this IGF has seen a certain number of initiatives and things related to the... Um, uh, the Montevideo Declaration, the uh, announcement of a potential meeting in Brazil. This is not fundamentally the, the topic of the uh, ICANN Forum. There, are, there have been many discussions. So we'll try to focus on what the activities of ICANN uh, are. That being said, if at the end of the session we have enough time and you really have questions, some of the, uh, the people in, uh, in the ICANN uh, space may be in a position or not to answer, given the flexible state <laughs> of the uh, of the situation. So, without further ado, um, it's my pleasure to to ask uh, my chair, our chair, uh, Steve Crocker, the chairman of the board of ICANN, to uh, to to come and and make uh, a general introduction because it's also um, an historic perspective that is coming up. Thank you, Bertrand. Um, so, as Bertrand emphasized, this is about ICANN as opposed to uh, a lot of larger issues, and um, this this IGF is is all a buzz about the the much bigger issues, which is a very good thing. But let me just stay focused on ICANN itself for a bit. Um, ICANN is now, uh, I guess, next month will mark its 15th anniversary. Um, so that's been a pretty long haul, and the transformations have been enormous. ICANN was uh, organized to... Um, ICANN was organized to provide a home for the IANA function, to promote competition and choice in the uh, domain name system, and uh, uh, and 
early on, the creation of the uh, registrar system uh, dramatically reduced the cost of registrations. Um, and over time, we've become a much more business-like and solidified system, gone through a major reorganization in the 2002 time frame, roughly. Um, and, and in many respects, a lot of the early issues are long behind us, and we're an up-and-running uh, solid operation. Of course, uh, most of the attention is on the parts that are not under control or that are still evolving. In the past year, for example, uh, we have put a lot of energy on multiple tracks into the uh, rather thorny issue of uh, who is uh, uh, information and the registration. And uh, let me just emphasize that by listing three distinct major efforts all related to the same thing. Uh, there is, of course, the Who Is Review Team uh, report and the recommendations. Uh, that's part of the affirmation of commitments, and we're in uh, full uh, high gear implementing those re recommendations. Um, there is also a very substantial change that has uh, been um, uh, imposed or, or uh, implemented in the new registrar accreditation agreement, and that is the result of very long-standing, uh, long-running negotiations uh, uh, most of which uh, are around the same set of issues. And then finally, uh, a year ago, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the board uh, took a look at the uh, sort of deep structural issues uh, behind the, uh, the uh, existing WHOIS system that had uh, evolved over a 40-year period and said it's time to take a fresh look and initiated yet a, a, another effort along a strategic uh, structural reassessment track, the first piece of which is the work of the expert working group, and its report is emerging and will be a discussion, and that's the beginning, not the end, of that effort. Um, we also have, uh, uh, during this year and is uh, about to emerge, the accountability and transparency um, uh, second, second round, uh, ATRT2 we call it, uh, looking at the, the accountability and transparency of the, our processes. And another uh, bracing set of recommendations will appear and uh, uh, challenge us to improve uh, yet more what we're, what we're doing. Um, <coughs> and then just incidentally, we've taken care of business uh, along a path we set on um, eight years ago, and new GTLDs have been put into the route um, yesterday, I think. And um, it's big news somewhere, and it's uh, business as usual from a different point of view. Uh, I've heard everything from, yeah, what's new to uh, how come we aren't making a very big deal about this. So it's, it's actually, when one steps back and looks at the span of time, uh, it's been a pretty uh, uh, substantial growth period. And um, a couple of years ago, uh, I noted when we were 13 that that's typically a very gawky, awkward age. And um, 15 still has much of that, but we're beginning to develop a little bit of the poise and uh, ability to go out in public and not... Uh, and, and I'll be milking around all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Steve. To illustrate a little bit the challenge of the, um, of the exercise of doing this at, at an IGF, I will pick the three, um, the three elements that um, Steve has mentioned to make a small explanation of each of the words that have been used because there may be a lot of people in this room who are not familiar with the ICANN environment and for whom the words themselves do not trigger exactly um, a clear understanding. Who is, as you may know, is the general directory service that allows people to know who is actually the person who has or uses a particular domain name at the second level in uh, the top level domain space. It is a distributed set of databases without getting into detail. It's a sort of very large um, address book that says Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so is actually the person that has bought or acquired the license, the capacity to use this domain name at the second level. This Registry was built initially 
for the technical actors, and so it was a registry available to all with the names and addresses and the contact phone details and so on. In the course of time, with now more than 200 million um, domain names and 2.5 billion users, we live in very different countries with very different privacy laws. There has been an ongoing debate for more than 10 years within the ICANN community because those informations were, on the one hand, made completely publicly accessible, were used for a lot of things, and on the other hand, were sometimes not accurate because people didn't want their private data to be visible. Therefore, it didn't serve fully the very purpose that it was intended for. Without getting into detail, the reason why I mention this is because, as Steve explained, a couple of months, a few months ago, a certain number of initiatives have been launched to move to a new generation of directory services that accommodates accuracy and privacy protection. It is a very difficult thing because it's at the international level and uh, defining these rules is not easy. But it's just to illustrate that on one very sensitive topic, ICANN is a space where global arrangements can and are developed on very sensitive issues like privacy. The second element is the ATRT2. That's a nice acronym, but as, uh, as Steve said, it's the Accountability and Transparency Review. In 2009, ICANN has changed the nature of the relationship it had with the United States government regarding not the INA function, but where it was attached somehow, so, sort of. Until 2009, a certain number of contracts, memorandums of understanding or joint project agreements successively had at regular intervals every three years on average made an evolution where the United States government was confirming that ICANN was in charge of the coordination of the system of unique identifiers. It has not maybe been noticed enough, but in 2009, this series of agreement has changed towards the now so-called affirmation of commitment. Sometimes a piece of paper makes a big difference. This affirmation of commitment has changed one limited but fundamental element. And this element is that instead of having an evaluation every three years by the U.S. government on whether this contract should continue, the contract or the arrangement is ongoing and the evaluation is being made by the community. This means accountability and transparency to the community and all stakeholders and without getting into details, every three years there is a group of people composed of representatives of government, civil society, the private sector, all the different constituencies of ICANN which review the framework under which ICANN functions. I want to highlight this as well because it is a unique review mechanism. It is a unique self-reflecting system that is a huge component in the multi-stakeholder approach, this capacity to self-evaluate. Because there is no, for those functions, there is no supervision now externally. It is the community itself that builds the supervision. And finally, I'm, I'm, I'm smiling because during the last few years, <clears throat> whenever people were talking about ICANN, everything was about the new GTLD program and the issues regarding the new GTLD program and so on. And rightfully so, because this was, and this is, a major change in the domain name system. As you know, the domain name system is at the top level divided in country codes and geographic um, and generic, sorry, top-level domains. And for a long time, apart from a few limited editions, the number of generic top-level domains, the global top-level domain, .com, .org, but also .info, .jobs, and others, were very limited in number. And in line with the mandate that ICANN was given a long time ago, almost from its inception, actually, there is an objective of making the best use possible of this common resource, which is the naming space. 
let's call it a semantic spectrum for explanation. This semantic spectrum, there are words that are useful and words that are not. There are words in one language, words in another language. And who is able to... Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. And who is able to manage a registry with those words or ending in dot sports, uh, dot Berlin, or dot anything else? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, for the scribes, all the preceding comments were from Bertrand de la Chapelle, not from Steve Crocker. Thank you, Sebastian. So, just to finish on the new GTLDs, a, a huge uh, process has been launched several years ago that went through a very extensive series of iterative developments in the structure to define the rules to allocate those names. Who is likely to be allowed to apply for a new GTLD? What is the process and all the procedures that are in place to do this? And so, after many years, a first set of recommendations was adopted by the GNSO, the Generic Name Supporting Organization, that set a certain number of policy parameters. And then a whole second process was the development of an applicant guidebook, pretty thick, that detailed the whole process. Make a long story short, this has occupied ICANN a lot, and in a remarkable way, the first four, I think, uh, domain names at the top level that come out of this process, more than 1,900 initial applications were made. There will probably be a little bit more than 1,000 top-level domains. The first four have actually entered the global root zone file uh, when? Yesterday or just today. And this is what it should be. It is a remarkable achievement and an almost non-event. That's what ICANN is about. Remarkable achievement that shouldn't be noticed. <laughs> so, this makes a, a, a transition. I'm trying to, to illustrate some of the topics. So, who is for some issues related to privacy? Uh, the accountability and transparency regarding the accountability framework of the organization and the new GT as one of these activities. At that stage, are there any, any questions or any, any comments uh, on what was just said before I move to the next uh, thing? No? Okay. So, as a next step, I was explaining right now that ICANN has been very busy with the new GTLD program. And it is not only a policy development, it's a lot of implementation and operational implementation. And as you probably know, or at least a lot of you know, for about a year now, we have a, somebody that I cannot call a new CEO anymore. He's our CEO for, um, for a year. And I would like to ask Fadi uh, Shehade to maybe come and illustrate a little bit what, in addition to the management of the new GTLD program, I see Akram Atala here was the, the manager of the... Uh, you, can, you can stand up just to, so for people to, to know you. I can, Akram Atala is the, the person who heads the uh, uh, department that deals with all the GTLDs and so on. So, Fadi, um, could you please explain what are the other things that you do and that ICANN does in addition to the GTLD program management, also the uh, offices, the uh, security aspects, and so on. Uh, yeah, we do have other things in our mind that keep us busy as well. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, let me start from the top. I mean, uh, many of you can go on our website and look at our budget and our finances and our projects. And, uh, you know, we have... Uh, uh, north of a couple hundred projects that are outlined on our website. If you haven't seen it, go to myican.org, and uh, when you go there, you can very quickly tell ICANN what you want to learn about all the time, 
and the website will automatically send you uh, a, a customized newsletter for you. But also there, if there is a tab that says projects, I think. If you go to that tab, you will see everything ICANN is doing. And uh, this is uh, a bit of news for you. In, Mon in uh, Buenos Aires, at our upcoming meeting, we actually went uh, a little farther, and we will be showing the budget attached to each of the projects. So you also know where we're spending our money. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, you know, many organizations get to that level, but we're trying to push the transparency as far as we can so everyone knows what we're doing. We have a large number of projects that fit into four broad categories that we outlined from the first day we started a year ago uh, with the new administration. Uh, I can, uh, a lot of focus at ICANN, a lot of the media at ICANN, a lot of the people attending ICANN meetings think that all we do is new GTLDs, right? And I think uh, the new GTLD program, which was going on for eight years until when? Until today. So today is the first day we have new GTLDs in the route after eight years. And in fact, uh, as soon as we're done here, there's champagne waiting outside the room for us. So we can all celebrate together. Uh, you, you mean literally? Literally. <laughs> wow. <Okay. laughs> so, uh, they won't let us bring it in, otherwise I would have been... Maybe we'll wrap up. up very quickly. <laughs> He's French, so he's happy we're supporting his economy. <laughs> oh, but yes, there's quite a bit of French champagne right outside the door. But uh, it, is, it is, in fact, a great day. Because today we, uh, we have confirmation that four new TLDs have been added to the root of the Internet. Uh, this just happened. Uh, but we do that. And that division, which brings ICANN about yeah, plus or minus $80 million a year, is run by Akram Atala, the president of the Global Domains Division. Uh, and that's an, obviously an important area of our work, and an area of our work that we're moving more, now that the program is out and it sucked all the oxygen of our attention, we should really now make sure all the other parts of ICANN that run uh, are clear and are helped to also evolve and scale like this area. But this area is an important area, and it takes a lot of our time. And Akram has been really a leader in not just making it operationally efficient, but also in rooting it in the public interest. Uh, so a lot of the new things we've done with the PICs are just the beginning of how we make public interest commitments. The PICs? Public interest commitments. Okay. We've asked every new registry to make public interest commitments. This was never the case before. And any of you who find out that a new registry is not meeting their public interest commitments, a very simple link on our website, you report them. And we have a big compliance team that will make sure they comply with their public commitments. So this is Akram. In addition to that, we have a large team under Sally Kosterton, who's sitting right there next to my boss, Steve Crocker. And Sally is responsible for all of our global engagement. What does global engagement mean? it means we need to broaden the base of people involved in the ICANN work. Because you must appreciate that for years, the people involved in the ICANN work were very good in English and were largely in the U.S. and Europe. That is not sustainable. We cannot have global legitimacy by having people discuss things largely in English and who are from a certain part of the world or frankly from countries where people have money to go to these meetings. So global engagement is about reaching out to the edges of the globe, bringing people into the process, building tools, building capabilities, languages that allow us to engage more people into the policy process. Especially now that many presidents, after Dilma's speech, are running around asking their people, hey, who decides these things in our country? Who decided this policy? We want to make sure from the bottom up they get answers. They get people telling them, hey, hey we're part of the policy process. And today I will tell you that if, if Mexico pushed hard as they are from the top saying, who in Mexico is deciding these policies? Not many people. So our legitimacy means we broaden the base. And that's what Sally's responsibility is. And just to give you an example, when Sally and I started a year ago, in all of Asia we had one guy. We'll have 12 people in Asia by end of March. Asia PAC. Asia PAC. 
I got it. <laughs> she caught me on this one. Um, now, she was about to tweet. No, Asia Pacific, Asia Pacific. Uh, we have Quack. 12 people. In Africa, we had, Quack, we had no one. Bahir, of course, Quack in Egypt. Right? Quack is. Quack now. Quack. Oh, Quack is our leader in Asia. He just joined us. By the way, you should all meet him. Uh, Asia Pacific. Our leader in Asia Pacific, although with Save. So, we're broadening that base. We're bringing more people. We're building tools. We're enabling more people to participate. That's a long-term process, but we're <coughs> investing heavily in it. So, that's engagement. That's Akram's GDD. Of course, we're also investing quite a bit on the technical and security area. So you heard me announce last week in India, we're opening the first center of excellence in the world on DNS security. We got the top research agency in India to co-invest into a multi-million, multi-year program to bring knowledge on DNS security that the world could share. So these are... Real investments we're making in enhancing the security of the Internet, in enhancing understanding of it. And we, we do a lot of things, by the way, that no one talks about. The plumbing. La, the plumbing. Last <laughs> week, I will tell you, I'll mention one thing uh, before I get to the plumbing. Last week, one of my team members briefed me that, hey, I just want to give you some good news. We participated in a global effort to break down a child pornography ring. Now you think, what is ICANN doing with the child pornography ring? Well, simple answer. Where does child pornography get put up? On a website. Well, where is that website hosted? Well, probably at some hosting company that was given the website name by a registrar who's hopefully a registrar reseller in the ICANN network. We have a public responsibility to help with that. We have some of the smartest people in the world in that space. And that it took us months to nail that child pornography ring. It took us through L.A. to Panama, we had to work with the Attorney General in Panama to find the roots of that company. We, one of our team members who speaks Spanish went into the company records, public company records, until he found connected. These are investigative efforts that we do with law enforcement. We, then we brought the registrars and the registries, and it turned out that this ring actually is in Russia. And then we had to involve Russian authorities. ICANN does all of that work quietly in the background for the public interest. And the last thing that uh, Bertrand helped me, uh, remind me of, minor thing, there's also this thing called the root of the Internet <laughs> that somebody needs to pay attention to. And uh, the root of the Internet, as I explained to many people, including my mom, who's 87, who you know, <laughs> doesn't understand all this stuff, she, she says, why do we need a root for the Internet? Well, I remind her, as I'm sure all of you know, that the Internet is not one network. It's tens of thousands of networks. The one thing that unites us is the fact that there is an address system that is enabled and guaranteed by a single root. Somebody needs to pay attention to that and think about it. If the root address system is one of the few things that make the Internet one, it's probably a target. Because if somebody wants to bring the, ad the Internet down, one fabulous way to do that is to bring down the root. So there are a lot of responsibilities that ICANN takes and takes very seriously. ICANN has, a, uh, this year, we have a yearly budget of about $150 million. We have 240 people. We're going to be about 300 people by end of June. So this is a substantial operation that has a lot of work, a lot of effort. And on top of that, unlike any operation I've run before, other than my Boy Scout uh, club, is it's run from the bottom up. And I'm learning that because I've never run anything from the bottom up. Okay? Uh, I think that part of it makes ICANN uniquely legitimate. Because if that bottom up model fails, if we do not keep investing in it and bringing more people that Sally is helping us bring to the bottom of the tent, working with our communities, then we lose our legitimacy. That's where our legitimacy comes from. Thank you. Very oh. Sorry. Two two things you mentioned two two elements that I would like just to ask you a, a little bit uh, more uh, about. Yeah, I'm still Steve Crocker. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. I'm sorry, Steve. We have a new chairman. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you mentioned. Sorry, I did. My name is Bertrand de La Chapelle, and I would like to be. <laughs> <Bertrand>. <laughs> 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 I 
I like this. I think he's Beth from now on. Hey, Beth. <laughs> okay. Now, for, for the scribes, so that you understand why there's laughter in the room, is because the, the scribing is translating it rather phonetically. Um, my name is Bertrand, like in French. <laughs> but Remember never French? mind. Put BPC and that's enough. Anyway, two, two questions. You mentioned... Uh, comp- B as in boy. Okay. <laughs> Say moderator. That's, that's okay. I'm the moderator. I'm a moderate person, but a moderator. Uh, two questions. You mentioned the word Good compliance, luck. and uh, you also mentioned the example of catching a ring of, of actors. Yes. Very quickly, I can has ramped up its compliance uh, mechanism, but it also... This compliance mechanism is built on something that is extremely important and that people don't necessarily understand exists, is that ICANN is the structure that helps develop what is called the accreditation agreement for registrars Mm -hmm. and also the registry agreements. And in those agreements, there are many provisions. And can you just remind us that the... uh, Discussions and the negotiations for the registrar and registry agreements have been concluded recently because yes. it's, an, it's a global instrument that cannot be developed by individual governments or actors. It is something where ICANN is a public function yes. collectively. Uh, this is very important, and I actually you know, learned that as I, as I started uh, engaging with the registrars. ICANN has an accreditation program that has 1,000 registrars in the world. So the registrar is almost uh, either the last point or the next to the last point where you go buy a website. Of course, a famous registrar many people know in the U.S. is, for example, GoDaddy, right? That's, a fam- that's one registrar of 1,000 that are accredited by ICANN. Of course, some registrars sell you the website name directly. Others sell the website through a reseller. And uh, as part of uh, our role, we ensure that the registrars that are accredited are under a contract that obligates them to meet certain requirements that serve the end user, whom we call a registrant, the purchaser of a website name. Um, And as Bertrand said, it's interesting because registrars don't operate typically within a national jurisdiction. Right? So GoDaddy, for example, is in, uh, in Arizona, but uh, in the United States. But people buy website names from GoDaddy all over the world. And it's actually a fundamental quality of the system that you can buy it from yeah. different places. Yeah. you can buy a website name from anywhere in the world. So the fact that I can, can set one registrar agreement for any registrar <coughs> operating anywhere on the planet provides us a mechanism to get a transnational contract, in a way, set across all boundaries and ensures that if a registrar is operating in jurisdiction A, they will follow the same rules even if they're selling the service to someone in their jurisdiction or any other jurisdiction. And that's something, for example, uh, even the, you know, the EU couldn't do or the United States government couldn't do. They could not force... On their own. On their own. They couldn't do it. So they come to ICANN, they give us insight, along with other stakeholders, and we work together to pick a new agreement. And this year, I'm happy to say, under the leadership of Akram, we worked very hard to get a new registrar agreement called the Registrar Agreement 2013, which enhanced the ability of ICANN to uh, ensure the service to the registrants, to the end users. And for the first time, we told these registrars that they're not our customers, that our customer, if I could use the word, is really the end user, and that they're with us, partners in serving that end user. But our main focus is not the registrar, even if some people think, you know, the registrars pay you all the money, so you should treat them as your customer. No, they don't pay us any money. They collect money on our behalf, and they give us a piece of it. But really, our customer is the end user, and it is our job to protect the end user, and hence we have the compliance function that ensures that if registrars don't perform, and you've been seeing our compliance team has been cracking. 
Now, and, cracking, and ramped up. And we ramped up. Uh, first of all, I took this team, put it under me. So it's never influenced by those who collect money. <laughs> it's, it's under me. And secondly, we tripled its size. And thirdly, and very importantly, in fairness to the registries and registrars, because many of them are excellent companies, we, sh we shifted their approach from being kind of regulatory to a partnership. Let's work with the registrars and the registries to make this a better marketplace. And, and I'll, I must tell you, most of the complaints we receive to the compliance office come from a very small portion of our registries and registrars. People paint everybody with one brush, but the majority of our registries and registrars are excellent and partnering with us to make this a better marketplace. Okay. Second question. More? Yes. <laughs> no, because when I grab you, I don't know. <laughs> Second question. You mentioned this work where uh, I can... Some ICANN staff has participated with other actors in efforts to handle things relati related to a, uh, a child abuse image uh, ring. There's a very sensitive issue here, which is that this is getting ICANN, and I'm provocative, in the remit of content. Yeah. The thing is, at the same time, the infrastructure operators who are coming to ICANN for the infrastructure, the governance of the Internet aspect, are actively involved in efforts to solve those issues. And the reason why you presented it a little bit as something that ICANN does is not to say ICANN wants to put that in its mandate. It's just that today there's no host and that actually all those actors want to find ways to work together. Am I right? This or? is very true. This is a very good point. So for all the debate that's been happening at the IGF, where people say, why are we talking about Internet governance uh, issues that are unsolved and topics that are unsolved? Because there are. There are many topics that there is no home for them to be addressed. So ICANN gets the pressure. People come to us and say, well, you solve this. Aren't you running the Internet? No, <laughs> no. We're not running the Internet. We do names and numbers. We're a technical community. That's what we do. But the pressure is mounting on us. So it's part of our goal to address the larger issues, which we're not part of, is to frankly keep us focused on our remit, what we should be doing. In fact, ICANN should become smaller, not bigger. It should focus on what it does. The only area we should get bigger is in involving more people. So we can truly say we're legitimate and inclusive. But the bigger issues and the other issues of content and how the Internet is used and who does what, we should be very much in the background. If there is a legal mm. issue, if we're approached legally by, by, uh, by uh, a, 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 an edict from a court, or we have, to, we have to do, if it's a process, we have to respond to it. No. Right? But, but we don't want to be instigating or participating or leading. We don't. We really don't. Yeah. Okay. I, I just, now you're released. But. Now I'm released. <laughs> I, uh, how many people here have, uh, are, quote unquote, new to the ICANN community? I'm just curious. Or, <laughs> Steve, my boss is raising his hand. That's worrying. <laughs> okay, so we have you know, a dozen people or so who are saying we're new. So to, to you, I, I extend my, 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 my sincere welcome. I hope you find this community welcoming. Uh, we, we are an open, uh, transparent community as best we can. We're not perfect. We make mistakes, but come make us better. So welcome to ICANN. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yes, of course. I was about to ask. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, my name is Subhi Chaturvedi, and I teach communication and new media and internet governance in a university, women's college in India. Um, and we also run a foundation called Media for Change from a developing country and an emerging economy perspective. Um, I'm really happy to be here because this is, and thank you for making it simple. A lot of these acronyms and names and numbers and and. And, and, and that is what we swim with and try and resolve this with. But when we talked about the other things that you do, we were really happy and welcome to receive you in India and to have you make the time and engage with the young leaders community, about a thousand of them from different parts of the country. When you talk about institution building, and I have a question here which stems from the 
process of multi-stakeholderism. And I want to borrow your words, um, Mr. Chappell. When you talked about a bottoms-up process, you also talked about going up. So it is it is good to be bottoms-up, but where is it that we are going when when we talk about the way forward and also the the fact that um, we want to be in the room. We, there's a lot of trust that is invested in institutions like the ICANN. From a developing country perspective, a lot of us are not in the rooms when these wonderful conversations take place. So when we say multi-stakeholderism, um, it's a good thing to have a hub. And I posed this question yesterday, but I didn't get an answer, so I will keep knocking at your door till I get one from you. How is it that we get to be a part of this conversation? Because it is a finite resource that we're talking about when you're giving addresses and numbers. And what is the legitimacy of the conversation that we have as a community? Are these recommendations accepted, deferred, and how do you resolve notes of dissent? So if you could respond to that, Father. Well, first of all, Subi, thank you for your question. I know how much you deeply care about uh, the, the, the inclusiveness of this model. Uh, I was recently in India, and Subi was kind enough to walk me into a hall of hundreds and hundreds of students who are eager to participate in this uh, discussion. And we engage them, and frankly, remarkably, so many young people want to be part of this discussion. They want to join us, and we, I thank you for making that possible, and I hope we get more of that. Look, the less happens uh, in, by leaders in some organizations, the better. What is happening at this IGF, which we will remember, I hope, for many IGFs mm -hmm. to come, is we're seeing a breakdown of the walls that separate some groups from other groups. We're broadening the conversation. I'm being very candid with you. Our community sometimes silos the discussion. So you have civil society having their little discussion. And then you have the technical community having its discussion. And you have the business guys having discussion. And they, in the ICANN community, sometimes these people talk, 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 talk. And they, their discussions never meet till they get to the board. <laughs> and that's not good. We have to break these walls and involve everybody from the beginning into the debate. And the more we do that up front, the more we involve people in the cross-community discussion and ensure that voices of dissent are heard, are part of the process at every level, the more we're legitimate. The, the more we're legitimate. The less we do this, the more we cook up the solution. Now, many people felt with this recent uh, discussion about... Uh, Brazil and Montevideo, they felt, hey, 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 who are these guys in Montevideo who got together and issued a statement? Right? It's easy to quickly, mm -hmm. uh, there's some cabal there that, here, here, there. here, here <laughs> they are, one, two, three of them, by the way, yeah, they're mostly here. But, but who do they think they are to issue a statement? And frankly, from the outside, I agree with you. Who are they to issue a statement? Okay, they happen to be the CEOs of 5, 6, 10, 11 organizations, I think, that are involved in Internet governance. But the statement, I must give credit to all those who are there, that the statement was meant to make this meeting and all the meetings since in the last few weeks uh, kind of say, okay, how do we work together? The, the, the statement from Montevideo was somewhat provocative, largely to get us to stop and move the needle and talk. But now we cannot continue making statements from some group that meets in you know, Cairo. Enough. Right now we need to remove these walls, invite everyone to participate in the discussion. So I just went to see the civil society groups and they said, we want to be part of the discussion. Great. You know, do you have nominees that can be the co liaisons to your community? Yes, they gave me four names. Fadi, you are not following uh, the, process. the process of the meeting. Which that, meeting? This meeting. This meeting. Okay, so because civil society has asked me to get off the... <laughs> but you will be involved. We'll and your voice has to be heard. End, Every voice has to be heard. Today I want to talk, give the floor to... <laughs> no, man, come on. <laughs> Sally, may I, may I ask you to pick on this? Uh, to, um, to, to, to continue on the, um, 
on the engagement policy and the uh, offices and the uh, different actions in the different regions. Uh, thank you, Bertrand, or Beth, as we shall call you. Yes. <laughs> I got to say, I think it's an improvement, actually. Yeah, it's, it's good. Um, I think most of you know who I am. Um, so anybody who is new to our community, um, again, I would uh, very much um, uh, add to Fadi's greeting. Um, I, I view it as a personal triumph um, as your stakeholders and we're engaging you. So something must be going right, and that's my day job. Um, we have a, a mission, uh, I, or I have a mission for, for my team, which is very big. Um, to try to ensure that everybody in the world who is affected by ICANN's work in their life, in their business, that, that they know, that they realize. And in some cases, they have rights and responsibilities, and in some cases, they just have rights. <laughs> um, most people don't know we exist. Most Internet users, don't, they're not aware of how the Internet works. They're not aware the IGF exists. There's a lot of people out there. Steve and I were debating exactly how many and I thought, well, Steve Crocker should know. And the answer was somewhere between 2.5 and, and 2.7 billion Internet users. We're going to settle on that for now. It's a lot of people. A priority in my role, as Fadi was saying, is, is how do we make sure we reach different groups in a way that makes, is relevant for them? And I'm going to talk a tiny bit about that now. And I'm going to rely on Bertrand to say, okay, stop, that's enough. Um, there are different ways of tackling this kind of problem, and we need different kinds of resources. In every case, the work that we do is extremely collaborative. And I wanted to make one observation before I talk about how we structure it. And I've just been on a panel this morning about regional engagement with lots of other colleagues in different internet organizations who do the same kind of jobs that I do, um, come to these kinds of meetings. And we were talking about an issue that's very close to my heart. And some of my team are in the room, so they must shut their ears at this point because I'm going to say something nice about them. <laughs> We've recruited a lot of people this year. We've particularly recruited a lot of people outside North America and Northern Europe. My team is probably twice the size it was a year ago when I joined, just headcount. And going to find those people has been a very interesting process. Because on the one hand, I'm really happy to say that a lot of people want to come and work at ICANN. Literally, my inbox is hopping with people. <laughs> Baddies is. Many of us are. And this is a great thing, you know. I think this is great. And for those of you in the room who have been involved with ICANN for many years, I, I hope that you will feel good about this. Because I think in a way it's a sign of, of, of really progress that people want to be part of this organization. But when you're bringing in people, particularly to do these engagement roles, they need to be a certain kind of person. Now, we tend to think about them in a rather categorized way. You know, are they um, Italian? Are they part of the technical community? Are they a policy person? And, of course, we need those functional things. It doesn't make sense to put somebody into a job who doesn't know anything. They're not going to be very good at engaging. But I have found the most important thing is the kind of person they are. They need to be genuinely collaborative. They need to not have an ego. They need to be able to listen. And we say to suspend their agenda. In fact, they shouldn't really have an agenda. The role of engagement at ICANN is largely facilitative. It's about helping all of you and the many other people that we don't know yet to get our work done. Now, so I have some great people, and I'm blessed. I've been very lucky in my past. I've worked with many great people. But I really feel, and I'm happy to say on the record, this is the best team I've ever worked with in terms of diversity, in terms of spirit. And this is the board. This is the whole community. It's my staff. It's not just the, the people in immediately my team. It's a very rewarding process. How many locations, Sally? There are the three the major three, Yeah, offices. I was just going to come on to that. So we have three hubs, which I think most people know about. And we can take it in Q&As. One in Los Angeles one in Istanbul, and one in Singapore. And they're time zone based. They're supporting, this, if you will, the time zone slices of the world. In addition, we have engagement offices. So the regional vice presidents who are sprinkled around the room, who are the engagement heads, are based all over the world. There are eight of them right now. 
Uh, we've just put somebody new, very senior, into China. We have a China engagement center. You can ring it up. You can email it. They will answer the phone and they will help you. There are two billion of them, as in Chinese, two billion Chinese people, and one person at the moment in an engagement office in Beijing. <laughs> but we're making it to start. And it's, very, it's a big development, very, very important part of our engagement process in Asia. Fadi talked about the expansion that we've had in Asia. Um, so we are moving around the world in terms of people on the ground. We are working increasingly closely. Each one of those vice presidents now has set up a working group, a community working group, balanced as much as we can across our four meta groups, our, our governments, our technical community, our academics, and our civil society. It's not perfect. Business. And business, I'm so sorry. Thank you very much. Um, yes, business is, is very active in some regions and less so in others, and that's a reflection largely of the maturity of the, of the, of the model. But the goal is to have an even balance of resource, and these guys, and the two of them sitting here, which is why I'm pointing in this direction, um, are at various stages of building really quite sophisticated engagement plans with uh, different, different types of community members and other internet governance groups in, in, in region and in country. Um, the final thing I would say is about scale. Because I have, maybe we probably have up 25 people overall in the engagement team. 25 to 2.5 billion is still a pretty small ratio. I'm not a great mathematician, but I'm, you know, it's <laughs> going to be a long journey, guys, if we go at this rate. <laughs> so we have to, guess what, use internet-based tools, what a surprise, to scale. And in, in another part of the forest, at ICANN, there is an incredibly energetic process going on, led by a man who many of you have worked with called Chris Gift, who's a, a very inspiring, very innovative. Um, Tajani's knocking, nodding his head because these guys work brilliantly together. And they are building very innovative platforms and tools and programs that help us solve problems about how we, a lot about how do we engage people that don't know us yet. Addressing language issues. We have a big language and translation team. We're now doing six languages most of the time and we're also adding Portuguese in uh, especially recently um, so I hope you will look at things like ICANN Labs which is, the, which is Chris's workshop um, participate in that um, I think that covered most of the, is that, does that cover That's what you perfect. needed me to cover? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely there is a, a, another track regarding the evolution of the meetings themselves but maybe we can we can come that back. Yeah, I'm conscious, if, of, conscious of your yeah, time. There's, a, there's a question of, uh, uh, of time. There was, um, I have to apologize, there were two people who had the question before, uh, and I don't want to, to, uh, to forget it. You had a question, and, and you had a question. Can you please? Uh, thank you. Um, this is uh, probably going to be a fairly I naive question, as this is my first interaction with uh, ICANN. Uh, my name's uh, Manu Sporni. I'm the chair of the Web Payments Group at the World Wide Web Consortium. Uh, so currently what we're doing is we're building payments into the core architecture of the web. Um, this is going to make it so that uh, you can send money just as easily as you send an email halfway around the world. As you can imagine, there are a lot of regulatory issues, identity wow. issues, um, things that ICANN already does for uh, registrars. Uh, could that, that's something that is uh, very interesting as you were. Sure. So, so a lot of what ICANN does translates um, to the work that we're doing. Um, now, now the, the problem uh, that we have is the W3C is composed mostly of technical people, right? We don't have a lot of policy, uh, lawyers, government, civil society involved. ICANN certainly has that. Um, I guess my question is, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that ICANN doesn't necessarily want to expand its, uh, you, you know, what it does, but there's also this parallel conversation about um, there being some kind of community created to deal with these sorts of issues, right? We, we need to discuss this stuff with policy people. We need to discuss it with civil society, and we need those people to feed input back into us. So my question is, who should, be, who should we work on? Um, or who should we work with on this stuff, uh, specifically identity on the web, um, specifically you know, payments um, and agreements between countries to, to flow uh, payments uh, easily? So if I understand correctly, is there a replicable methodology or something yes. that could be used? Steve, you want to? 
So it turns out in a prior life I was a co-founder of CyberCash, and uh, where we did a lot of work on putting payments on the Internet. And um, it, it is indeed a mixture of technical issues and uh, regulatory issues and um, uh, market forces and a lot of other things. Um, so just on a personal level, you got my attention, and I'd, I'd like to chat some. In terms of how much I can can help, uh, yeah, we have a lot of attorneys. We have a lot of interactions with governments and so forth. But I shudder at the idea that we might be viewed as the pathway for, for filling in all of the pieces that you said you don't have. Um, we can help a little bit with the identity, a little bit. But basically, there's going to have to be another structure somewhere. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I understood correctly the question, it was not so much requesting ICANN to do something, but who could you talk to to see what are the component principles that led to um, the multi-stakeholder model being implemented in our space and how they could potentially be implemented in yours in a separate thing. Um, I have a, a, timing, uh, a timing issue uh, because there are several hands that have been uh, raised, and it's important that questions can be can be asked. So we'll make a round of of questions. And um, no, I had uh, David Martino first. No, 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 David. Thank you, and there is no French uh, complicity in, in that. <laughs> So I guess my question would be very naive too and, and very technical since Fadi said that ICANN is a technical organization, so absolutely no political consequence, but does the process of internationalizing the IANA function go with any kind of technical challenges? And if yes, uh, what, how much time could be necessary to solve those problems? Okay, there were... Another, there was another question in the back. Sorry. You will get an Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Omar Ansari. I work for the Afghanistan uh, ICT Alliance. Uh, um, um, Afghanistan, uh, uh, with all good things happening in the country, uh, there are some... Uh, uh, some not good things happening in the country as well. Uh, we have some areas that are uh, extremely remote. The only transportation uh, means uh, that work there is uh, uh, donkeys. And even uh, we have donkey ambulances. If you're interested to see this, uh, 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 you can see it on my laptop. Not sure if you can see it from there. But you can Google it. A donkey ambulance, and you will see it. The reason I'm, I'm mentioning this, that in the world there are countries and people who have different needs, and uh, those needs are completely different than, uh, uh, than other uh, countries. In ICANN, if you see, there are countries that are engaged and countries that are less engaged, and there are countries who are not engaged. Now, if we're talking about engagement, we need to work with the countries that are not engaged. And there should be special programs developed for the not engaged countries so that are, uh, they're brought into the process and uh, they're part of the, the ICANN family. Thank you. Without opening up the, the discussion, I encourage you to, to touch base with, with Sally and to discuss in particular all the mechanisms for fellowships and, and, and the local engagement that can be, that can be done. Cheryl, you had a question. No, I have an answer. Um, ah. <laughs> which shock and horrify those of you who know me that I have an answer. I had a response specifically to you, but now I actually have something to say to you as well. Um, whilst ICANN itself, as the entity, may not be a, a perfect nexus to meet your need, there are parts of ICANN that are very, very engaged, as you've noticed, in policy they have attracted a number of amazing people, resources and peak bodies. So by going down a level and talking to the component parts um, that are involved in policy and a number of us can 
give you those names, I think you'll find access to the types of civil society, business, uh, legal and, and other, in many cases, quite peak bodies. So I just wanted to make that. So whilst it can't be necessarily in the name of ICANN, you can probably find a pathway to, to, to meet your needs. Um, and I just wanted to say to you, of course, that there is a number of things that uh, under Sally's uh, uh, Sally's guidance and, and her fantastic team is happening and it's happening fairly, quick, fairly quickly. So we do have things soon that will be more and more public uh, that, that will assist directly. There's a, a simple question and an expert answer system. There's a whole lot of things that are being tested out now to see what gets uh, good public support. And so, yeah, I think watch this space because there's a whole lot of things that should be rolled off very soon to, to exactly meet your needs. So, well, and there's no such thing as a silly question, of course. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Just for the presentation, Cheryl Langdonor is currently the, uh, the chair of the nominating committee of... Oh, no, no, the, the, yes, after Buenos Aires. Yes, after Buenos Aires. Sorry, you're absolutely right. Uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> And the, um, and the former chair of the at-large constituency that um, Olivier Crépin Leblanc is currently. Uh, just an indication, I'm sure that there are people in the community that will be interested in thinking about the models. Don't, don't hesitate to either come to the Buenos Aires meeting or to talk to us afterwards and we can point you to people. Uh, a, last, a last question, and I, and I keep your question maybe for the, the last element because it's more related to the beyond uh, it's actually, sorry, not a question. Um, I'm, the, as you've heard, there's a several number of these strategy panels for ICANN, uh -huh. and there's a specific one headed by Vint Cerf called the uh, strategy panel on ICANN's role in the internet governance uh, ecosystem. There are 16 members of the panel, and six of us are actually here at the IGF. Oh. So if you do have uh, any input into that process, in other words, ICANN's role in, in the internet governance mm -hmm. um, ecosystem, please find myself, Pinder Wong, uh, or any other, the six members who are here. Thank you. That's a wonderful segue. Actually, I wanted to ask Teresa to talk a little bit about the... No, 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 <laughs> please come. You cannot escape. <laughs> yeah, it's not, wonderful. Not Thank you very much. So, um, as, as Pinder had said, that there are some strategy panels that have been put into place, but let me put this into context first. Uh, so, first, I'm Teresa Swinehart. I've been... Um, I've joined ICANN, which is now a new organization, um, from when I joined it the last time, so I can attest that it's a living organization. For, for the scribe, this is Teresa Swinehart. Sorry. Yes, which now is Teresa. With <laughs> T, a, Reza. Yes, and a heart, um, which is not unusual. Um, so ICANN has several review processes that exist, and it also has a strategic planning process, and it has these strategy panels, and I just want to put the strategy panels into context. Um, when the bylaws were created, it had review processes added into it to ensure that the organization was a living organization, that it evolved um, as the Internet evolved and as um, it needed to serve the stakeholders globally. And so it's a very, very unique process that exists, and I know that sometimes it becomes a little confusing with all the review processes that are in place, but it's the value of the organization and the value of the model for us to be taking advantage of. The affirmation of commitments, which was also touched upon, again, another way to ensure that the review mechanisms of the organization keep it alive and serving the community. Strategic planning process, likewise. Are we going in the right strategic direction? And now I'm supposed to come up front. Yeah. So there we go. Serving the way. Oh, so I can see everybody. <laughs> um, so the strategic planning process, again, a process that sets out the strategic plan for the organization, community input into that process, and that then informs the operational and business planning of the organization. So where do the strategy panels fit in? Well, as the organization evolves over time, there's certain themes that have ari arisen from the community input that really do need to be addressed. And how do you bring the organization to the 21st century and move it forward in that context? So one of them that Pindar referred to is ICANN's role in the Internet governance ecosystem. And that is in the Internet ecosystem, in the communities in which it operates, but also in the internet governance space. What is its role and responsibilities there? Now, this panel is going to be serving, um, has quite a few participants on it, um, as Pinder had alluded to, uh, including Pinder, who, if people don't know, was actually involved in ICANN's early formation. Um, we go back for a long ways. Uh, and times are different now, so we really do need to look at that aspect of the organization moving forward. 
There's also one on technical innovation, uh, and that's being headed by Paul Petrus. Again, looking at ICANN's role in the technical innovation part. Just for those in the community or in the, in the audience who do not particularly know the different names, Paul Petrus is nobody else than the uh, one of the major inventors of the domain name system, Yarki itself. So it's actually a nice way to come back in Thank to you. see how it will evolve or can evolve. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Um, there's another panel on ICANN multi-stakeholder innovation. How do we actually engage with the community and use the tools that exist in the 21st century and in the world we operate in now as opposed to in the world that we operated in when we were formed in order to engage the community? The other panel is on public responsibility framework. Um, ICANN is a large organization. Um, it has resources. What, what elements are also serving for our public interest responsibility? So those, those panels... And this one is chaired by Nick Quainer from Ghana. From and Ghana. the previous one is... Uh, Beth Novak. Oh, the real Beth, you mean. The real okay. Beth, yes. Not the Bertrand <laughs> Beth, but the real Beth. Exactly. Uh, so these panels were announced on the 14th of October. Uh, they have a fairly aggressive time frame, um, but they also have a time frame which is really seeking to engage with the community. Um, they will have their discussions, they will have outputs that will be uh, engaging with the community for community input and then wrap up their work in January. The final piece will be put out for public comment and then will help inform uh, the strategic plan, but they are not giving recommendations to the strategic plan itself. Very operationally, there will be meetings, I suppose, in Buenos Aires in a couple of weeks during the ICANN meeting dealing with those panels. If people come to the, uh, the meeting, it's okay. They will be able to see or interact. If they are not coming to the meeting, I suppose that most of the sessions that those panels will be holding will be uh, remote participation enabled. And where can people uh, potentially follow the work or chime in? Is there a specific location on the website that is easy to access? Yes. Yes, we will have. Um, first of all, you should go to the website and look up the inf – you can see the information about the strategic um, panels themselves. Mm -hmm. And then for the Buenos Aires meeting, there will be information available on how to engage with them. As the strategic panels go through their public consultation process and as they're engaging the community through various tools, whether it's webinars or other tools that exist, um, that information is also on the website and will be available to everybody. So we are making this as open and community engaging um, as we can. Thank you very much, Teresa. Um, <clears throat> I have a question from, uh, from Paul Wilson there. If there are other questions, Paul. Also not a question, actually, Bertrand. I hope that's okay. Sorry? Also not a question. I hope that's okay. You mean responses? That's not possible. Yes, that's right. Contributions. Um, <laughs> I'm Paul Wilson for the, uh, for the scribe. That shouldn't be too difficult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'm, uh, I represent APNIC, which is one of the IP address uh, registries, and um, even the five R RIRs, the five of the IP address registries together, represent a pretty small slice of what, um, what goes on within the ICANN world. Um, Maybe not quite as small. Just the IRRs, for those who are not following all this, are the reg regional internet registries, which are the five organizations in the different regions that actually distribute the internet um, protocol addresses, the IP addresses. Thank you, Bertrand, because that's the first reference uh, to numbers that we've had so far in the exactly. session. Exactly. That's, um, that's okay. We're, um, <laughs> we are sort of used to that. I met a, I met a new ICANN staffer uh, maybe uh, a year ago and, uh, and said to her... Um, no one who's still here, by the way, and said, uh, well, of course, ICANN's about 95% names and 5% numbers. What do you think? And she said, numbers? <laughs> but, She's uh, not the, there anymore, right? The numbers are the, <laughs> are the IP addresses, and the RIRs are responsible for allocating the IP addresses. We rely on ICANN for the IANA function, which, alongside doing all the work on the, on the root zone of the DNS, also happens to allocate the IP addresses to, uh, to RIRs. And so we really do rely on ICANN to do a, a good job in that, particular, in that particular function. We support ICANN. We have, um, have done so for years, although we, we predate ICANN. In, in fact, we have mm -hmm. supported the ICANN structure at ICANN itself. And I think, um, 
I can say personally I think ICANN is doing a good job these days and ICANN is in good, good hands these days and I really do commend the board of, um, of ICANN for, for hiring Fadi and enabling the work that, uh, that he's doing because um, you know, it, it is, as far as I'm concerned, it's in the right, uh, it's in the right direction. I mean, we, we rely on ICANN not just to do a good job on IP addresses, we rely on ICANN to do all of its responsibilities properly, even, those respons even though those responsibilities are sort of outside of our, of our um, scope. And, um, and so, again, we support ICANN for that. But I'd also like to say I think that Fadi is a guy who's moving very fast and he's got a very broad um, vision and, and he's talking about a pretty big, wide world outside of ICANN and um, risks possibly being seen as going too far and too broad. But I don't, I don't blame him for, for what he's doing because just as we are responsible within the RIRs to make sure that we're working in an environment, including ICANN, that's functioning. I think ICANN is responsible for making sure that the environment, or contributing to the fact that the, the environment around it is, is functioning well as well. And so because I, it's I an ecosystem of a lot of an interconnected... Yeah, absolutely. And it would be absolutely negligent to be sort of heading forward, particularly in these times, uh, without, without having that, um, that really broad view. So I, I think um, I do... Uh, commend ICANN for that. I think we, we do appreciate it. I think um, at, the, at the operational level, ICANN is doing some great stuff. I think moving the GTLD stuff into a division of its own is really going to help, I hope, uh, numbers not to be completely lost as, as they have been in that huge job that ICANN has, has got to do. And there's, there's quite a, a lot of other stuff that, we're, that I think we can, be, we can be happy with. So I wanted to, I wanted to make those points in particular. I wanted to take the, um, take the opportunity uh, also to um, pinch a bit of the glory around the champagne that's coming later because um, the RIRs, uh, we assemble under something called the NRO, the Number Resource Organisation. The Number Resource Organisation signed an agreement with ICANN to form the ASO and so on. And you hear us represented uh, as the NRO uh, quite often in the in intergovernmental forums and, and at ICANN as well. But, um, it and was you, actually on, on by the way, have a booth here, so if we people want if, if to have more information, there's a booth the just NRO, at the it's end. A, it's a point a of booth. communication with the RIRs collectively, and, yeah. and so we're not all repeating ourselves constantly as we, as we tend to do. Um, but anyway, just, just lastly, the, um, the NRO was formed by the signature, signatures on a memorandum of understanding on the 24th of October uh, 2003. So today is the 10-year um, anniversary of the NRO. So that's... Um, wow! Thank you very much. Actually, so I'm, sh I'm sure that it's also uh, the reason why we have the champagne. It was a surprise anniversary for you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that well planned? Thanks. <laughs> um, a, a, quick, a quick question, and I'd like to ask Heather, if you don't mind, to... Uh, okay. uh, thank you. I'm Jang Yusin from Bangladesh. I'd like to share this uh, opinion. I'd like to thank the uh, ICANN concerned person for taking necessary engagement for new leaders from developing countries. So based on this, I just share my, our uh, country's experience. Yes, we just follow the rules and policies from developed country. While we try to copy the rules from developed country and put in local countries, we make face a couple of challenges. So my request to ICANN, please try more and more leadership from developing country, so they participate on ICANN and participate on policy development process, so policy, the gap between developing countries and ICANN should be minimized. Then we do not need the copy and paste the rules and rule regulation in our local country. So my request please try to understand our local development countries views and try to, try to take necessary steps for engagement of developing countries, new leaders, especially general, young generation leaders. Thank you, and also thanks to ICANN. No, you're welcome. Actually, uh, one element of answer was what was discussed regarding the Registrar Accreditation Agreement when it is something that doesn't require copy and paste because it's a single agreement. The second thing is that one way to engage developing countries is also to engage their governments, not all the other actors, but also their governments. And it's a very nice transition to give the floor to Heather Dryden, who is the representative of Canada, but also, more importantly, the chair of the Governmental Advisory Committee, which is the uh, group of government representatives within ICANN. How many countries now are represented in the GAC, roughly? 129. Wow. 
129 countries in the GAC. Pretty nice crowd, and they're all in agreement and always in consensus, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. <laughs> As they are everywhere else. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, you want, would you like me to stand? Okay. You're not obliged, but so sure. people will see you better. Okay, <laughs> I'll try. I feel uncomfortable having my back to people, so... Uh, so come here. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so, um, yes, we have 129 governments, but we also have... Um, about 28 observer organizations that are also represented in, in the committee. And uh, they, they are regionally based or expert based. So we have some UN organizations like UNESCO and, and WIPO that are really quite active in the committee. And uh, as well among those 129, of course, some are more active than others. Um, but it's important to have representation from all the regions. Uh, as you've heard, um, the, the policy making function is really, is really the main task of, of um, all the activity that takes place at ICANN. And in order to, to have outcomes or decisions that reflect you know, regional differences and, and, and uh, different approaches, based on uh, national legislation and, and so on, then um, you really do need to have a good broad representation uh, among the members. Um, so we've heard about some of the ways in which uh, participation is encouraged. Well, um, in the GAC, um, up until perhaps a couple of years ago, um, we didn't have interpretation services, but now we do. We have um, all UN six languages plus Portuguese, and as well we have a fellowship program. And this has made a tremendous difference in, in our ability to, to visit a region, uh, interest, uh, governments in participating and retaining them, and that's something that's been really difficult to do in the past. Um, as well, you've heard all about the new GTLD program. Well, uh, for the GAC, we were given a very special role um, that we haven't had before uh, as part of uh, the, the running of that program, as, as part of the, the, the rollout of the program, where we could comment and be quite influential on uh, top-level domains that uh, governments would find sensitive or, or controversial. And this has actually brought, as well, uh, quite a bit of uh, attention and participation into the GAC. Um, we, we've had, as a result, um, uh, some interesting experiences in dealing with issues that, that are not a common feature of, of the deliberations that, that take place in, in, in the committee. Um, and that's been kind of challenging um, in some cases, um, uh, but uh, it is uh, 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 really uh, important for, for governments and, and their representatives in the GAC to be able to work as part of this, this wider ICANN structure and to be able to move as quickly as possible because, as we've heard, the, the organization is about evolution because that's how, how the internet works and it's very dynamic and, and so on. Well, it's certainly the case uh, for, uh, for, for governments that, um, that we feel under pressure um, in other settings where, where governments participate and, and work with each other in a more traditional environment, they, they really get to determine their own agenda and their own priorities. Um, however, if the policies are being initiated outside um, the, the government committee as they are um, at ICANN, and um, there, there is a, an interest or a need to influence those decisions, then there is a pressure there on, on governments to, to try and, and, and be rapid and, and um, to, to provide their, their inputs, to provide their advice in a timely way. To be, to be frank, uh, I've been, as I mentioned before, uh, in the position of being a member of the GAC and actually one of the vice chair during two years, uh, and there are very few international organizations where I see governmental representative working full weekends, <laughs> up to wee hours, uh, to contribute to a participatory process. So I take the opportunity to, to say thanks to the commitment of some of the uh, GAC members that I see in the room. I see the UK. I see, who else do France. I see today? Uh, France, of course. Sweden. Uh, Sweden here. And so, just just to to see one one element. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, Hungary. I see a few more. And you have more. <laughs> it'll, it'll I'm, not, I'm not looking at everybody, to, and there are also like some former for ones yeah. <laughs> as I can spot because okay. they stay in the community. Yeah. Um, just any uh, the the new GTLD program has been extremely um, uh, time-consuming, and it has been a huge effort and co huge collaborative effort. 
What do you see as the elements in the, in the next few months or, or years that will be important for the GAC in terms of the evolution of the organization? Any highlights or things that you would like all of the community to, to be aware of and, and work with the GAC on? Well, I would, I would point to the evolution of, of the GAC um, because it, it is growing in size and um, the, the advice that we've provided um, in, in the last few years has become much more detailed and substantive compared to what we yeah, provided before. Yeah, different exercise from... Yeah, so, so there are a lot of pressures on, on the committee to, to keep working this way. Um, and, of course, if, if the committee is successful, it generates a lot of attention, um, and sometimes that success can, can actually uh, uh, provide an additional <laughs> pressure as well because if people, more exposed, um, no if more governments visibility. see meaning in, in the committee and think it has uh, influence, um, then they're going to be that much more interested in, in um, being influential <laughs> themselves within the committee. And so it's really becoming uh, increasingly politicized and, and sometimes the debates focus uh, a lot more on, on rules and procedures and that kind of thing that you would see again in a more traditional setting. And because it's a working level committee that needs to generate advice on public policy issues, it, you know, again, that needs to be quite specific in order to be useful, in order uh, for the board and for the community to be able to take it in and, and work with it. Um, so uh, uh, all of this, I think, um, uh, makes it very challenging. And consensus processes take time as well. And if you imagine the committee growing more and more, then, um, then that's also going to just make things And also longer. because the topics get more attention today. Yeah. Uh, one thing I wanted to, to highlight is for people who are uh, in the larger community who do not necessarily participate in ICANN, it's one of the places where there are three meetings per year and where the connection with governmental representative, even from your own country, is actually a channel that allows very informal discussions that you would not necessarily find at home, just like in any international conferences. So if it is only to be able to connect with other people from, the, um, from your country, uh, come to the ICANN meetings. Paul, you wanted to, to a question? A friendly question, right, Paul? <laughs> a, friendly, a, a friendly question, yes, for sure, for sure. Um, we, had a, we had a nice meeting this morning uh, with uh, Quek and uh, Jia Rong uh, of the Asia community uh, talking about internet cooperation in, uh, in Asia. And one of, the dis one of the discussions was about... Asia Pacific, thank you. Um, one of the discussions was about um, bringing activities together, finding intersections and collaborations and cooperations uh, across a whole matrix of, of intersections of, of sort of modes and, and subjects. And um, the prospect of a joint um, regional focused ICANN gathering within, under the banner of one of the existing um, and alongside one of the existing uh, regional meetings came up as some a mechanism for providing a platform for different, party, different parties to be coming together, to be working together and also cross-fertilising the sort of activity. So, for instance, we might have APTLD in the Asia-Pacific uh, as well as the um, CCNSO, as well as APIX, as well as various different, um, different regional groups that already come together under a banner. And one of the... Um, I see that as a, a way of cross-fertilising and of, of attracting interest in ICANN and from ICANN community in, in what's going on in the region. And one of the, one of the sort of measures of success I would have of that would be if we could get a good subset of GAC members from the region to actually come along to an event like that and see the value in sort of seeing not from the ICANN meeting perspective, but from the local sort of regional perspective, really getting a better exposure to what's actually going on uh, in the region. And I'm just wondering what you think of that. Is it a pie-in-the-sky idea uh, to actually get these folks to, the, to a meeting like that? And uh, if you don't, then would you support it? Thanks. <laughs> um, I think that's a, that's a good idea. I mean, it's, 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 it's um, easy to see the value in that. And as... Uh, um, the, the, the committee grows as well. You see an increasing interest in working on a regional basis 
And I mentioned that some of the observers in, in the GAC are regionally based, and so I see them as being a really useful uh, means for helping support and prepare their, their members or their region for a GAC meeting. Um, so it's mm. not a huge leap to then say, well, would those same governments see value in, in tacking on to you know, other related meetings um, where th there would be that kind of cross-fertilization. And, you know, in some cases, I think um, GAC members are, are looking for those opportunities and, yeah, looking for that. So it just makes sense, I think. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Heather. I have managed the time with a little bit of, of delay. So I have two more uh, person. I would like to ask Olivier Crépin Leblanc, who is the chair of the um, at large, uh, to to tell us just in a few words uh, what at large. They're is. avoiding my name altogether. There's yeah. nothing there <laughs> at all. Okay, well, okay. Uh, we've only and, got a few and, minutes. And, and, so. Yes, and the second thing is to talk about the um, at-large summit uh, next year. That's right. Thank you very much, Beth, Beth Ran. Um, <laughs> That's going to stay. I'm so sorry. I'm here, here to speak to you a bit about the at-large um, and actually uh, respond to a few questions which were asked uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, first, the at-large uh, itself. Well, we're the committee um, that uh, deals with Internet users. Uh, we're an advisory committee. Uh, that effectively brings the input from Internet users around the world into the ICANN processes. And uh, that's no easy task because the world is rather large, which means we've divided the world in five regions. We've got regional at-large organizations that tap into uh, pretty much nearly, I wouldn't say every country, but we try to uh, tap into every country around the world uh, to at-large structures, which are effectively computer clubs, user organizations. Um, we've got Internet society chapters, very, very diverse communities of people who use the internet. And on, and on the site of At Large, on the site of ICANN, that is the part of At Large, you can find the relevant At Large structures in your country to get in touch with them. You can, and if, if yes, there is no At Large structure in your country, which is the case, and in fact in Indonesia there isn't any at the moment, uh, there isn't yet, yes, because what I've done uh, throughout the, uh, the week is to actually go and see local organizations if they That's wish good. to join as an At Large structure, and there are several uh, that have said that they will be joining, so uh, we're looking forward to receiving their application. So to the gentleman from Afghanistan um, who spoke earlier, um, we are waiting for an application from your country, so uh, <laughs> we might need to uh, speak a little bit later. The interesting thing is that um, because the community is so diverse, we don't have experts in DNS or, or experts in, in ICANN, the work that ICANN does. We actually have people who are internet users, and I will contradict our good uh, CEO Fadi in saying that the customer is actually the internet user, not only registrants, but anyone that uses the internet. Because if you go on a website, no matter whether you own a, a, a domain name or not, it needs to work, so ICANN needs to be respon responsive uh, to these people. And so this is pretty much what we try and, and push forward. Um, we've and, got 160... And at large, the at-large advisory committee is one of the advisory committees. Well, we've got 160 at-large structures. If they all spoke at the same time, it would be an absolute nightmare, and we wouldn't be able to get anything done. So through, uh, through an organization where we have a kind of a pyramid, we can start with the bottom-up process by uh, grouping the pyramid into the five regions, and then having the ideas and all of the input come up from the five regions into an at-large advisory committee, which is composed of three people from each one of the regions, two of them selected by the region themselves, and the third one selected, well, next year, I guess. Not next yet, year, not, not yet, yet, but selected next year <laughs> by least. Cheryl's uh, committee, the nominating uh, committee, and I'm sure they will be looking uh, for people to apply for positions in the at-large. So that's an important, very important fact. The summit, briefly. Briefly on the summit, I know I'm always at the end, aren't I? I'm sorry. Um, uh, the summit, yeah, no, I'm here just to wake you up before the next session. Um, the summit, uh, 160 outlaw structures, very, very difficult to get everyone woken up at the same time. The earth is round, so it's always four in the morning somewhere, and it's very difficult to get people to work all together on, on big problems. 
This is the reason why ICANN has very kindly uh, managed to actually allocate a lot, rather large sum, uh, rather large budget to ship everyone over to London in June 2014. We'll have all 160 Atlas tractors, hopefully actually more than that, since we'll probably have hopefully the Indonesian Atlas tractors as well by then. Um, and uh, I cannot tell you about the agenda because it's the Atlas tractors that are making the agenda themselves, and they're currently working to, to make it up. So it's really their summit for themselves and for ICANN as a whole and for all of you and you're all uh, very much invited to participate in the summit we all work uh, with open doors uh, and uh, I hope that I'll see many of you over in London in 2014 which by the way will be the 50th ICANN meeting as well so a double calls for celebration thank you thank you thank you Olivier We'd like to, to, to finish this, uh, this session by uh, touching briefly on some of the elements that have been, that have been discussed uh, and the things that ICANN has been involved in, in particular uh, the emergence of the Montevideo Declaration, but also the discussions about the uh, meeting that is uh, going to be in, taking place in Brazil and also the uh, platform or the activities to gather energies around um, improving the system of, of governance. And the reason why I was asking the question to Fadi earlier regarding the ring of uh, child abuse images is because it is illustrates the tension and the types of issues that today do not have a home to be handled and shouldn't be handled by ICANN, but need a home to be, to be addressed. Olga, and with apologies for having run the meeting a little bit long, Olga Madruga Forti is a member of the ICANN board. Uh, she is from Argentina. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about this? And there will be other opportunities, I'm sure, to, to interact on those issues as well. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Olga Madruga. 40, and how much time do I have, Bertrand? I think a five minute, like, like the previous uh, statement. Okay, I'll okay. tell you what. Um, internet governance, what it is, how it's evolving, why does it need to evolve? Five minutes, no. So why don't we try, I will suspend my presentation and we go straight into questions. And I'll tell you why. Is there anyone in the room that did not go to some forum in the course of the week about the need to do something and evolve uh, the model and the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance in response to external forces and current day international dialogue. No hand. That is everybody. Every single seminar, forum, panel that I have gone to has touched upon this in the course of the week in some way. I think that's really evidence in and of itself of the fact that it is the hot topic of the day. Things are evolving, things are changing around us, and that is why uh, within ICANN, uh, with uh, Fadi's work, the excellent work of all of the, his executive team and the staff, and in cooperation and dialogue uh, with the board, have set out a certain short-term plan of action and response. And it began uh, with Fadi visiting uh, the I-STAR community and President Dilma Rousseff in Brazil to talk about what are the concerns of uh, governments and other stakeholders around the world regarding the model that should be addressed. As a result of that conversation, it became clear that there is a vacuum, there is a lack of platform for certain kinds of issues that the current multi-stakeholder uh, model does not have a home for. And there are other concerns regarding the con continuation of the IANA contract between ICANN and the United States uh, government, developing country concerns that are um, 
do not fail to have a home for dialogue, but uh, certainly do not have a concerted place for resolution and honing in on that dialogue in a multi-stakeholder fashion and in one place. Uh, as a result, it was the idea of President Rousseff in, of Brazil to establish a platform for that dialogue. And uh, she graciously announced a conference to take place in Brazil where stakeholders could coalesce and come together. From that announcement step stemmed for ICANN, really, how do we help in that process? And the idea came about that there should be a panel of experts that thinks about where are, are the spaces that are unfilled, what are the concerns, what are some ideas as to how those spaces uh, will be filled. Can anyone tell me what some of those concerns are, are out there? Cybercrime, security, child uh, pornography, developing countries concerned, more of a shared space on equal terms around the world in terms of uh, what is internet governance. That just to give some examples are of what are the concerns out there. Well, now we know that that meeting will take place probably the first week of May uh, in, in Brazil. Uh, Brazil considers itself the uh, host of the meeting and not, ne not necessarily the leader or sponsor of the same. It is a rare example of uh, a potentially recommendation-making body that will include on equal footing all kinds of stakeholders, governments, users, uh, business interests, including infrastructure builders, and service uh, providers, experts on very important issues of the day, uh, like intellectual property uh, experts, all uh, coming together to think about what is missing in the multi-stakeholder uh, model internet governance space and perhaps make some uh, recommendations and help us along on a, on a path uh, forward. So you can see that that is an ICANN activity that is not necessarily integral within its day-to-day -day activities, but it certainly impinges upon the future of ICANN and the multi-stakeholder process. And I think it's time for all of us to both uh, toast the future of the multi-stakeholder model and uh, the events of the day. So, Fadi. We can continue the, um, yeah. Thank you very much for having attended. There's an invitation to join outside to celebrate both the entry of the new TLDs in the route and the anniversary of um, the NRO. So <laughs> thank you very much. If you have further questions, there are several people who are either members of the board or people who have spoken. Don't hesitate to approach them and, and continue to ask them what you think about.